Asians. This uh, means a, sc a, a crown, that you know, of course is a screen, and this uh, was made for projections. And here it was supposed that uh, Lenin of the political personality could uh, came up because here there is an step, uh, an stair, sorry. And all this was related to propaganda, of course. And uh, these people who contribute so uh, firmly, like uh, Gustav Klusis, all of them were killed by Stalin at the end of the 30s. So uh, Alexei Gastev, uh, Meyer, uh, Meyer Hall, Mayakovsky com committed suicide, but all these people who were participating in this uh, so exciting moment, they understood the problems and the danger of this construction uh, of the society that could, of course, uh, go against the uh, individuality of uh, everybody. There was, after Gastev, a colleague of him, uh, did uh, an institute of time that the central, uh, the, sorry, it was called the Time League and it was uh, founded by Platon Hertensev. Uh, he was a thea theater critic and uh, he went further in this control of uh, movement and time and he tried to uh, made uh, like a schedule of not only the time for walking, but only or also, sorry, for the um, time at home. And, and he made uh, like a book manual of uh, telling how was the best moment for all the Soviet people to uh, spend the time and how they need to did it. And he, of course, was also killed at the end of the 30s, at the big killing, massive killings of Stalin, because uh, they were, um, in a way, uh, radical and incontrollable, and, and Stalin uh, came back to a more conventional order of uh, artists and thinking. Uh, there is uh, also a very funny book that I want to recommend you that is com called Hammer and Tickle, that is a history of communism told through communist jokes by Ben Lewis. And there is a joke that I like very much because it uh, explains which was the real situation for the people, for the common people. Uh, it's a joke that says that an old peasant woman is visiting Moscow Zoo when she sets eyes on a camel for the first time and she says, oh my God, look what Bolsheviks have done to that horse. Uh, it could sound an exaggeration to say that uh, life in post-revolutionary Russia was an experimental field in which the only limit to the limits of reality was that the one of imagination, but it's really uh, true. The imaginable had already happened. Because the inimaginable had happened because nobody could understand how Lenin could do that so quickly and, and made the revolution possible. And so they thought that everything could happen from that, no? There is a, a journalist that is called Edinburgh who wrote uh, something that I like very much because uh, he, he was traveling around uh, Europe, and when he came back to the, you know, the Soviet Union in the 24, he was uh, doing lectures around the country to talk about Europe and the situation of Europe. And um, I, I read something that he wrote. After each lecture, there was a deluge of questions. I made a note of them. Why hadn't there been a revolution in Germany? What's the la latest fashion in Paris? Uh, what's worse, a socialist traitor or a fascist? Give us a short explanation of the theory of relativity. Why do people have to pay for schools again? The people was paying for schools again because uh, Lenin did something, um, a, a step back 
with the economical policy, with the something that is called NEP, that is very famous when he opened a bit into the capitalist uh, extreme ways of working again, because uh, it was after the civil war and the, the, the economy doesn't work. So, uh, Why do people have to pay for schools again? Why do writers fill young girls' heads with all kinds of nonsense about love? Does communism offer us any change of defeating death? This is the thing that I like, you know, that in a conference someone could ask about if communism is going to defeat death. Uh, most Russians, including uh, Gorky, for example, the, the writer, thought that really um, they could uh, find the technical way to defeat death. And they thought that the socialism will bring immortality. Uh, there is a philo uh, philosopher that is called Fedorov that is very interesting for this moment. Was, uh, very influential in Dostoevsky. That invented, some, invent, invented a philosophy of the common. Uh, he imagined a state capa capable of reviving the death through scientific methods. Uh, and uh, at this moment of common, of, of the construction of the communist society, uh, this fits perfectly because um, many communists thought that it was not fair to work for next generations and then mm, uh, suffer because, uh, you know, after Lenin death, Stalin mm, uh, did this uh, five years plan that were awful for, for the workers and they, they, they spent all the time working in and trying to build a new uh, Soviet Union industries and it's the time of the big uh, works in with channels and uh, metallurgic uh, plants and the people was really tired. So they thought that um, it was not fair to, to live like that then to, to, to live a better wall for the next generation. So they, they, they thought that uh, the communists will, will need to find a way to uh, preserve the bodies of all these people and uh, to make uh, them, res um, to, to, to resurrect them in the future, in, to, to, to make them to see the paradise that uh, communists will Great. Uh, this Fedorov, uh, for Fedorov, the possibility of resurrection, thanks to technology, was not only theoretical speculation, but a moral need which would compensate for the inequalities, wars, and injustice uh, that mankind had suffered across the age. This social radicalism, his theories on travel, on space travel also, support for genetic engineering, his obsession with the need to seek ways of extending people's lives and improving their health, once again proved popular. More than ever, it seemed only fair that, f that for the sacrifices which the builders of socialism will have to make for the good for future generations, they should be um, rewarded with resuscitation. Fedorov used the art museum as a model for the utopian society of immortal he wanted to build. This is funny for me because the state will become a museum of its own population and every individual an artwork. As the museum's administration bear responsibility not only for the collection's inventory but also for the perfect condition of each and every artwork. So the bodies will be the artworks and mm, the curators will be taking care for the bodies for thinking the possibility of uh, resurrection. 
it was like communist, uh, the, mo the most radical communism, communism uh, uh, beyond the, 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 la the life. No? Prominent among the supporters of this theory were the Biocosmic immor Immortalists that uh, made the manifesto in the 22 that reads, for us, immortality, resurrection, and rejuvenation are basic human rights as much more, much more important than uh, uh, rights that uh, French made in the revolution. Uh, there is a, someone, it's not here. There is someone uh, very interesting at this moment also that is called Alexander Bogdanov, who wrote uh, many, Alexander Bogdanov. He wrote two novels of uh, Since uh, Five and uh, Two Utopias. And uh, he imagined in these novels the cybernetics. And now the many uh, scholars are thinking in him because he made a system of uh, data and uh, connection between uh, uh, knowledge that is really, really similar to cybernetics. And in one of these uh, novels that is called The Red Star, he imagined a company, some companies in a city, and there is an engineer that is in a space uh, ship uh, flying, and he, see, he, he sees the, like a, we could say a computer, which is uh, projecting the, the figures of the production of each uh, factory. And, and it's a way to uh, regulate the production of the city. When, when a factory is uh, producing too much, the other produces less, and all the data uh, is, is something related with the present data visualization of this kind of thing. At this moment, uh, Bogdanov who was a politician, was a Bolshevik uh, leader at the beginning, and then he split with, Le with Lenin. And he was one of the founders of this prolet cult movement. And also, I explain that because it's, it's, it's part of the, this crazy story of uh, sharing knowledge. He was also a doctor, and he did the first uh, transfusion institute, uh, the first in the history of human king. And he thought that, uh, re re mm, he thought that uh, because of the blood transfusion, you could have the characteristics of the other person. So he put the blood of young people into elder, or uh, he thought that uh, the benefit was mutual, uh, for example, between a young student and older intellectual because she will be more clever and he, he will feel more young. And, uh, but on the other hand, this is a, a strange uh, proposal, but uh, on, the, and on, the, on the other hand, he made a, a super good investigation on that that helped uh, later to do really medical uh, transfusions with sense, and he died uh, because of a transfusion of contaminated blood. But but before that, he he did uh, an amazing job. I I want to show you here the paintings of a group that was related with Bogdanov and this. Uh, theory of systems and the mm, correlativity of knowledge that I found really interesting. This is uh, Nikitin 
um, Solomon Nikitin, who invented the project Xenil Timo something like that, but it's something really modern also because uh, he thought that the, the work of art uh, was not important by itself, but only as a process or as a project or as a projection of uh, something, of a willing of construct something. In this way, it's uh, really related with contemporary art. So we are talking all the time about processes. And uh, for me, one of the more interesting things uh, of my research in all this uh, moment in Russia is that when you try to think about something that the contemporary art is thinking now or is looking for, they already did, and uh, all these material, materials are uh, really uh, forbidden and in, uh, forbidden by Russian people because you know um, they export the more the abstract avant-garde, Malievich or Kandinsky or this kind of uh, experiences and. Uh, all these people that was trying to paint the theory of relativity or the te thermodynamics or were people that were really uh, writing about uh, science and um, art and the meaning of art. This is uh, also uh, someone who is related with uh, this projectionist, that is Abramov, who did the uh, symphony of the factories. Uh, and also he worked with Bertov and he did a very famous film that is called Enthusiasm. I don't know if you know it, but the, the, it's the first uh, proposal of uh, do music with uh, noise in between the first uh, 20s. So uh, I will pass a little bit this. This is uh, Lenin <laughs> in his, here in his coffin. He was uh, in Barnet, as you know, and his brain was, was put in this pantheon of brains. Uh, this is a very funny story, the Pantheon of Brains, because they saw that the, as in all this uh, mess of uh, knowledge, they thought that the, they could find the, the genius of uh, Stalin, uh, sorry, of uh, Lenin in the shape of the brain. So they asked uh, a neurologist from Berlin to open his uh, heart, head and to analyze the, but the, the brain. That was really damaged because uh, Lenin uh, suffered many strokes and it was not a really nice <laughs> brain and they couldn't uh, understand where was the talent and they did uh, an inform that uh, it was not finally published, but they opened with this excuse the museum of, uh, sorry, the Institute of the Brain. So uh, all the talented play, uh, people of, the, of that moment, like uh, Mayakovsky or Gorky or Sakharov later, all the all their brains are there, also Stalin's and and you can see them and you can know how much they, the, the, the ki how kilograms they had. And I wanted to follow, this is Stalin. He was also in Bel, uh, he, he was also for six months uh, sleeping with Lenin <laughs> in the same town, but then they decide that uh, it was better not to, to have it there and they buried him. These are two posters of uh, Gustav Klutis just before he died. He was killed by Stalin, as I told you. And uh, I want to show you 
just uh, the, it's the moment of the construction of socialist this uh, five-year plan that brings me to another thing that I wanted to show you that is the project about the sleeping city of uh, Melnikov and with this I think that I will finish and then we, we can talk about Melnikov uh, was a famous uh, architect in the 20s he did this uh, club for um, workers that was very famous and has been reproduced. This is, I did, I did this uh, real uh, furniture for my exhibition. And uh, the furniture is made by Rochenko and he, he made the, the installation and the pavilion and also there are no many works of him uh, stand, but uh, this Rusakov club is very famous, it's still in Moscow. And this is the project that I want to show you. Stalin implemented the first five-year plan uh, with a program uh, of uh, more heavy uh, constructions, mass migrations and propaganda and uh, it was followed with a uh, strong uh, cultural uh, revolution, new, the new cultural revolution as he told. And at this moment, in two years or something like that, they, they imposed something that is called uh, socialist realism, that uh, uh, it was the, the end of all these uh, formalistic experimentations and so on. So. You have seen, of, for sure, the realistic painting and all this uh, of the 30s. But I, I want to, to talk to you about this building because it, I think it's very interesting. And then I, I finish. Uh, in the 29 Pravda, which was the, that means uh, true, and that was the newspaper of the Soviet uh, state published an advisement for a public competition for the designing, designing of a garden suburb on the outskirts of Moscow, where workers could go to recover from, from the stress and the strain of work. It was a very popular uh, project and uh, Stalin implemented the first five-year plan uh, with a program uh, of uh, more heavy uh, constructions, mass migrations and propaganda. And uh, it was followed with a strong uh, cultural uh, revolution, new, the new cultural revolution as he told. And at this moment, in two years or something like that, they, they imposed something that is called uh, socialist realism that uh, uh, it was the, the end of all these uh, formalistic experimentations and so on. So you have seen of f for sure the realistic painting and all this uh, of the 30s. But I, I want to, to talk to you about this building because it, I think it's very interesting and then I, I finish. Uh, in the 29 Pravda, which was the, that means uh, true, and that was the newspaper of the Soviet uh, state, published an advisement for a public competition for the designing, designing of a garden suburb on the outskirts of Moscow, where workers could go to recover from, from the stress and the strain of work. It was a very popular uh, project and uh, there were three um, finalists. So there is, uh, one was Ladovsky, the second one was the constructivist Ginsburg, and the third one was Melnikov. Uh, Ladovsky won, but uh, finally the building was not done. Uh, they wanted to do uh, city for resting. This is the project of Melnikov. And uh, it was 
for uh, temporary stage for the workers who were so, so, so stressed and uh, in bad condi uh, wealth condition that uh, they need uh, like a green pla uh, place to stay. Um, Melikov did this plan uh, it need to have uh, many forests and uh, green um, places. He, he imagined wild uh, animals inside, and I read you something about this. Um, he designed different uh, sections, green zones, gardens, public areas, houses, children area. Uh, Melnikov proposed blocks of communal dormitory buildings uh, in green zones following with the circular layout. And he did the, this building that interests me a lot that is uh, called the place for sleeping. And he uh, designed in this way because uh, he thought that when you were here, the beds were here, you don't need the pillows because of the inclination of the of the building, and it was uh, supposed to be all the city. It was supposed uh, uh, charged with uh, wind uh, energy. And, uh, he thought uh, in the circulation of the air in the music that uh, the people will have here for sleeping and uh, what food uh, will take the people for dinner and so and so. So everything was totally described in the project. Uh, you need to think in this place in the uh, context of the Soviet psychology that we talk about of uh, social engineering. And uh, it was supposed that during the sleep, uh, the patient would listen music and poetry and probably other messages and uh, will return to work the next day, transform, uh, willing and able to work. Uh, Melnikov, uh, wanted to do some uh, to go further and uh, he proposed uh, an institute for experimentation also in in here and he wanted to work with the conditioning reflexes as i told you about pavlov and and to try to to make uh, the people change uh, with uh, he was not sure with what, but with uh, art and with uh, senti uh, with um, electric impulsions and m many different things. Uh, Melnikov did this famous house in Moscow that you can see it really now. Uh, I think that. Mm, this is more or less that I wanted to show you. This is a skin that I love from Truffaut, which is um, about uh, a novel of uh, Henry James, and a novel and, and all the short stories. He made a mix and he did this uh, La Chambre. Uh, I don't know if, if you know the, the film, but it's, it's about the dead people and how to Mm, pay a tribute to them. The main character is a widow and he used to have a um, room, a green room devoted to the, his dead uh, wife and then something happened and uh, the, the room burns and he constructs a chapel where he puts all the uh, memories of her and not only of her but uh, also of all the, his uh, other dead and it's funny because you can see the deaths of Truffaut also they are 
hidden between the memories of her. And you can see Henry James or Proust or the people who, who he admired. Uh, to finish, I took some uh, information about the new funerary services that you can uh, buy in one company that is called uh, Memori M Memoria or something like that, Memory? Yeah, uh, Memora, sorry, it's here. Uh, of course, uh, the companies of funerary services, they have no work because the uh, incineration uh, made uh, things more cheaper. And also till now, uh, the, the business of uh, the boxes for the, the crematory burial boxes uh, were a big uh, thing, but uh, at this moment, many people that uh, has no money is uh, bringing their own boxes, so they are developing many interesting services. One of, this of, of them, of course, is related with the DNA. You can, uh, they, they are doing banks of uh, DNA in case uh, in, any time, in any time you can be a clone or something like that. They are also developing uh, biography uh, emporium of uh, not only biographical uh, books, also recording of videos. You can uh, ask them to tell your life in, or you can do it together with them. You can give them hair of your beloved uh, dead and they can produce this diamond this I find really scary. <laughs> this is an amazing uh, box made with Swarovski. This is especially for Russian people. And this is something that I like that is uh, being used especially in the States, but I think that it was in, in uh, also in Belgium in, in one cemetery they are using this uh, video, sorry, oh, okay, it was too big. It, it, these video um, screenings where you can see, you can hear the video of the dead uh, man or woman. So th with uh, their story or talking to you or talking to new generations or talking to the humankind and so on. So, so this, this was my reflections about uh, dead art and time. And I, I want to recommend you also something that I forget, that is um, the investigation of uh, Alexei Pesin, who, who did a fantastic investigation about the, uh, how uh, we deal with the uh, sleeping as a category that nobody studies because uh, we cannot fit it into the capitalistic uh, research, meaning that when you are uh, sleeping, you are not producing. So it's something that uh, doesn't go to the philosophical or uh, metaphysic studies, only to physiological. And I think that he has a very interesting uh, investigation that is called Rex Ex Omnis that was published this year with, uh, in the catalog of uh, Documenta that is called Sleep and Subjectivity in Capitalist Modernity. And he has an idea that I love that is he, he thinks that sleepy bodies are not instrumental as the art works and then when we sleep, we, beca we became our works of ourselves. So I think it's a very nice idea and it's related also with this museum of dead people of Fedorov. And, um, and also it was not healthy to, to have the uh, houses so close to the cemetery. In this book, you will find a lot of information about uh, uh, 
about uh, Paris cemeteries especially, but more or less is the same. They, they at, at some moment they were put out of the city. So Montjuic was a not uh, constructed uh, mountain, and uh, it grown until it was also too small. Then we have two more, more far from the center of the city, and you know this one is a modernistic one and. In a way, uh, there are one that is fantastic that is in Poblano, that is, I don't know if you have been there, but it's near also the sea, but in the other part of the city. And it has uh, strange stories. The, the, I, I like the, to know the stories of the cemeteries. The, 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 there is always something very literary in, in many of them, like the the girl who was uh, who commit, commit suicide because of love, and then you find always the flowers of someone. That this kind of story, the, and, and now you can visit them with uh, like a, 